Hello, yogins. This is Amanda Shepard. Welcome to Amanda Shepard Yoga Play Along Practice. This week, per request, we are going to be doing some work with inversions, both headstand and handstand prep, and maybe handstand lift. Um, you want two blocks today for sure, and maybe a blanket nearby. And uh, we're going to start laying down on our mats. Okay. So Shavasana, Ardha Shavasana, seated, uh, Shavasana, Ardha Shavasana, or constructed rest, any one of those three. This practice will involve a lot of shoulder work. Of course, you wanna make sure that you're healthy enough to do a fairly strong practice and that you are able to go upside down. Um, I will offer some restorative inversions in case um, that's more compelling, but we will be going on our head and our hands today. Nice deep inhale, exhale through the mouth. Soften the shoulders, allow yourself to feel the support of the earth. Let the breath even out. Um, have the breath evolve from the belly up through the chest and exhale from the chest down through the belly. <coughs> Excuse me. Just reversing the usual course of your breathing so that you can stay focused on it. yourself to notice the pause between uh, your inhale and your exhale because for a lot of people that moment of pause is when they want to say jump forward into an inversion or something you've evened out the breath. Just let your arms float overhead. Maybe flex your feet. And try to scoop the belly in toward your spine, reaching up. Maybe even let your feet come hip distance if they are wider. Reach your tailbone towards your heels. If it's interesting, you can let the toes touch, but you really don't have to when you're laying down. And interlace your thumb knuckles, right? So I have the thumb knuckles interlaced. Hug the arm muscles to the bone. And allow yourself to see if you can lengthen the back of the body. So you're gonna do that by engaging the front. Your hip bones are gonna move a little closer to your low ribs. And then spread your collarbones nice and wide as you let your triceps face the sky. Feel the shoulder blades lift up towards your ears and spread the collarbones and then switch the thumb clasp. Try to keep that length in your back. And allow your hands to reach out towards the side and you're going to lift that right leg to sky. You can do some ankle circles here. Nice deep inhale here. Take your hands to the hamstrings and just push your hamstring into your hands. Spread your collarbones here and allow your arm bones to move into the socket. So you have a little dual action, hamstrings to hands and then Use your hands to kind of draw that leg bone into the socket and let your right sits bones reach towards the top of the mat. Couple breaths, nice deep inhale here. As you exhale, allow your hands to glide up the leg and you can keep 
Using your arms to draw that leg bone into the socket a little bit more. Try to keep your legs straight. And feel how when the leg bone moves into the socket, the thigh moves a little closer to your chest. And then reach out with your left foot. Reach that left foot towards the top of your mat. Notice your low back on the uh, earth and see if you can keep it nice and even. So you're not reaching that right hip out to the side. It's gonna stay, the hip points stay in one line. Nice deep inhale here as you exhale. You can lift the shoulder blades, spread your collarbones, and just see if you can draw that leg bone into the socket. A little bit more. The thigh will melt more towards your chest. Try to keep that as you bring your shoulder blades back down back of the head is in the floor. So really inviting that hip flexion. Gently release, couple ankle circles. And then let's just do some big giant circles with that right leg, going both directions, just to get some fluid in the socket. Reach that leg nice and long. Notice the space there. Draw your low ribs in. It's gonna feel funky, but it's definitely gonna feel different. Give yourself a giant hug. Right arm is under the left. I'm gonna even out my shoulders as I draw the shoulder heads away from my ears. Reach the elbows up. Maybe Garudasana arms. Bring palms together if that's interesting for you. the ribs in. If you like, you can reach that right leg to sky one more time and just see if you can snuggle the left leg behind it and maybe take Supta Dardasana. Nice deep inhale here as you exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale, reach away. Exhale, just doing a little bit of core work. Let's do five. And then you're going to twist to the right. Exhaling to bring the elbows and legs together. You're going to twist to the left, taking your elbows to the inside. Three, four, five. Reach those arms to the sky. Just split the legs, allowing the outer hip on that right side to open. Go across the legs. Beautiful, unwind. Just reach the heels nice and long. Soften your shoulder and just allow your left leg to lift up. Notice if that hip, hip wants to move out to the side, reach it long. You're gonna take your hands, place it around your hamstring, hamstring into your hands and vice versa. My hands are interlaced, collarbone spreading. Drawing the arm bones into the socket and using my hands to kind of draw the femur bone into the torso, right? In towards that nice little acetabulum. And then reach out with your right big toe. Try not to arc your low back, keep it long. Nice deep inhale here. As you exhale, glide the hands up the leg. Keep using your hands kind of isometrically to draw the leg bone in. Notice the thigh will come closer to your chest. Okay. Maybe let your hands slide up so the shoulder blades lift off the body. Keep your low back even on the earth and see if you can draw that leg bone into the socket more to bring the chest closer to your thigh, right? You're gonna keep that and then let the shoulder blades come down. Still keep reaching out with the right big toe mound. Few breaths here. Gently release, couple ankle 
little circles. If your hamstrings are tight, you can use a straw. to each direction. And then see if you can reach that left leg up. You're gonna snuggle the right leg behind it, guard off the legs, and give yourself a giant hug, left arm under right. Draw the shoulder blades away from your ears, keep the belly in, give your palms together. Shoot to guard off some nice deep inhale. Here's your exhale, elbow to knee. Five crunches. Warming up the belly. Go to the outside. Back through center, come to the inside. Back through center. Let's reach both legs to sky, reach your arms nice and long, and we're just gonna inhale to Navasana, both pose. Bring your sternum to the sun. Draw your low back in, maybe grab your calves, maybe grab your heels, and see if you can bring your elbows together. Sternum's reaching up, plug the leg bones into the socket, keep the thighs close to your chest. Breathing here. Good, nice deep inhale here. As you exhale, just let the toes gently touch the floor, make genie arms. And you're just gonna bring your knees to your forearm. Five, four, three, two, one. Switch the arms. Five, four, three, two, one. John is your shots and right leg's gonna reach out. I'm gonna open that left knee out to the side. Breathing nice and easy. Belly button's over the knee. And just allow yourself to come on forward. And again, working that hip flexion, lengthening the spine. Let the discs between the vertebra be at their uh, most potential, right? So you don't want any side squishing. Good. Inhale. Reach the crown of the head forward and up. You're just going to let your left knee bend in. There's probably a fist between. We're going to take Marachasana A. Left arm to sky. Belly button over the knee. You're going to come on forward. Reach your arm around. If your hand finds your outer waist, you can probably clasp. Breathing here. Try to keep the sternum moving over the toes. And reach out through the right big toma. Inhale, come on up, and I'm just gonna have you take your thumb, place it right behind that left knee and bifurcate the calf. And reach that left heel right to the outside of the hip. I'm wearing super loose pants on today. Um, so it probably looks like super wide, but it's not. Outer hips are firming in. You can bring your right foot to the floor. If you need to place a blanket underneath your right hip, go ahead and do so. And then I'm actually gonna externally rotate and then place the foot into my hands. And I always have to do this pose twice, you'll find it. Crown Shasana, you can use a strap here. Plug that leg bone into the socket, sternum over the toes. And then good nutrition pose. Is it Bharad Vajasana? I'm going to bring the heel in towards the left belly button and just reach across. Now, if half, our, if half lotus is not available to your hips, you're going to place the foot on the inside. Breathing here. Right arm's going to reach forward, turn the thumb down, integrate that arm bone into the torso. So draw it back. Reach the hand around. Find your twist. Left arm to sky, and hand goes to the outside of the knee. 
your head, yes, and now look over the right shoulder. Go to the left shoulder and come on back through center. I'm just going to gently reach that leg forward and open up for seated paragasana. So I'm keeping heel at my sits bones, finding a twist. Right ribs moving to the left, bring the belly button over the left knee. And come on down. Maybe your right arm's going to reach the sky, maybe it reaches overhead. Roll that chest up. Maybe look underneath your left arm. Try to hug the leg muscles to the bone of that right leg. And then reach it around. And then let the left leg come forward. Wiggle around. Find your sits bones, hands forward. Navasana bow pose. Join the elbows together, keeping that connection between your thighs and your chest. Left leg is going to come forward, close the right knee joint, John is your shasan. Belly button over the knee, come on forward. Hugging leg muscles to the bone, my hamstrings are tight on this side, I can feel that. Any arm variation, maybe like a block if you're pretty open this way. I want you to think about that um, integration of the femur into the body. Let your breath be easy. Now it's more about elongation. Some of you will be up here. That's totally fine. Right? I'm gonna keep the energy lines open. More important than like say touching your foot or your or something, right? Inhale, sternum over the toes. Come on up and look. Bring that knee to the sky. Reach the right arm to sky. Keep that little twist and then snuggle in. Okay. And reach around. If your fingertips find your waist, you can probably find the left hand. So this is internal rotation for your shoulders. Your shoulder hips are gonna drop forward. We're going to allow that. The lower your right arm is around the shin, the easier the clasp is. Just a general note. I'm going to come back up. I'm going to take my thumb right behind the knee and just draw it down towards my Achilles and bring the heel to the outer calf. This might be enough. Maybe you want to open the quadriceps up a little bit by just lifting the hip bones. I'm going to step my left foot back, find my hand clasp. And I like to externally rotate because that's just the way my hips work better. Right? And then I always reset it every time. Mm -hmm. Breathing here. Chest over the toes. Crown chest, it is a little early for this pose. Feel free to use a strap. I'm gonna re-bend the knee and just see if I can make like a saw. My foot's nice and flexed, knees and toes in the same line and saw across. And again, if um, Arda Padma is not available to you, keep the John Usher shafts in the leg. Do what works for your body. I'm gonna reach the left arm forward, integrate the shoulder, thumb turns down and just Reach your hand around. Do what's gonna make your energy feel the most flowy, right? I'm gonna reach that right arm out, keep twisting, and maybe we'll snuggle the fingers underneath the right fingers underneath the left knee. Scoop your belly and look over the left shoulder, look over the right shoulder. the leg nice and long. And Paschimottanasana. So fingertips to your hip points, draw them into the body, sit up nice and tall, and hinge over. Try to work that hinge.
Need a block, use a block. As I'm working this hinge, I'm drawing the big toe mounts into the block. Taking chest towards my thigh. Spreading my collarbone. Inhale, reach the crown of the head forward and up. And as you exhale, just gonna come to all fours. Any way you like to do that, wrist, elbow, shoulder. And I wanna be really um, particular about how I work my hands, right? So, um, let's see, you can't really see it. So I'm gonna turn this down just a little bit for a moment. Okay. So, most of the work of your inversions actually is in the torso, but you want your foundation to settle easily, right? So my arms are shoulder distance. If you're very bulky across here, you might like your hands a little bit wider. And then we're gonna balance index and thumb, maybe middle finger. You want that really grounding in. Grip the floor with your hands, forearms towards each other, biceps away from each other, so it's external rotation, right? Triceps to the back of the room. Collarbone spreading energetically, drawing hands towards your knees, knees towards your hands, and then you can grip as well. You can push your finger um, tips into the, you know, very tip of your finger into the floor, right? And let's do that for our cat cows today. Glue the belly button to your spine with your next exhale. And keep it there with your inhale. And then tuck the toes, lift the hips up and back. Ahem Mukhishvanasan. Downward facing dog, shake your head yes or no. Bring a lot, and then as you push your hands straight down into the floor, wrap the triceps towards the back of the room, and see if you can push your hands in enough that you can draw your hips back a little bit, and then let your tailbone face towards your heels. Good. and then from here, you're gonna keep wrapping your triceps back. Let your elbows hover off the floor, your heels will lift. And that's gonna strengthen your shoulders. Re-extend the arms. Belly button, the spine, shoulders over the wrist, come on forward. Find that arm integration and just roll on to the outside edge of the right foot, inside edge of the left, and you're setting up for Vashistasan. Now with this alignment with your arms, it's easy to row the left arm to sky. You're gonna stay nice and strong here. Drop your left ribs in and scoop that arm overhead. Maybe butterfly kiss. And then you're gonna pivot the heels. Keep reaching that left arm forward and float that right leg. Left hand comes down, Chaturanga Dandasan. Inhale, Cobra Up Dog. Exhale, Atta Mukha Svanasana, Downward Facing Dog. Lift your right hand and shake it out. Do lots of crazy wiggly circles. Right hand comes to the floor. You're gonna look at your palm, nice straight arm. And then reach that hand back out. Belly button, the spine, shoulders over the wrist. Get your alignment. Okay. And any variation, you can always bring the foot in front. So this is super stable. 
Or reach that right arm to sky overhead, maybe butterfly kiss. And pivot the heels, keep reaching the right leg forward. You're gonna float that left leg nice and strong. Right hand comes down easy, Chaturanga Dandasan. Inhale, Cobra Up Dog. Exhale, Downward Facing Dog. With your left hand, shake that hand out. Maybe look at your palm. And bring it back. Nice deep inhale here. You're going to lift your toes. Lift your heels, rather. Bring your knees to the floor. And Vajrasana. Again, I have giant pants on, so it probably looks like I'm the size of a house. Not quite the size of a house yet. <laughs> we're going to find your sit. Uh, Shake the wrist, and we're just gonna strengthen the top of the hand by pretending we're gonna scratch the dog, right? Scratch the dog's butt. It's a really nice wrist strengthener. Let your breath get nice and even. You can do 10 breaths like this. My fingers are moving much faster than my breath. Gently open and just turn your wrists away from the body. You can do this one hand at a time hard for you. Right. This time I heels of the hands are down. I'm energetically trying to draw them away from each other actually. Letting the biceps move away from each other and triceps to the back of the room still. And if you, this isn't enough, you can lift your hips and take this to downward facing dog, but there's no reason to force that. I'm gonna bring the knees down, turn my hands forward, and let my fingers face my knees this time, looking at my palm. Thumb is super easy. I don't wanna stretch the thumb out to the side too much because it will strain it. Let your arms straighten. Play with your shoulder a little bit. Take it out, shake it out. And same thing with the other side. Don't put too much pressure. You don't need a lot of pressure here. I have seen people take this to down dog. I'm not gonna demo that. In fact, I keep the pressure super light. Like I really don't have a lot of weight in here at all. I'm gonna shake it out and bring the hand down. Okay, and then From my tabletop, right? I reach my hands, one hand leg forward, tuck the toes, lift the hips up and back. Ajahn Rudishmana. Wrap those triceps back enough that you can bend your elbows and just let them hover. Try to keep the index and thumb uh, mounds on the floor. Chest towards your thighs. And then gently let your elbows come down. And you can do one at a time if you need to. And then I'm gonna karate chop the floor with my pinkies, interlace my fingers. Dolphin pose, chest towards your thigh. Make sure your elbows feel like they're right under your shoulders. And try to take any banana back out of it, right? So if your sits bones are spreading and your belly's moving towards your thighs, see if you can draw your sits bones together. Posterior tilt. And then 
then use the work of your forearms to let the chest draw back, right? So not low ribs floating towards the knees, keep those in. So use pushing into the forearms to bring the chest back. Shoulder blades are moving towards your sits bones here. So your neck has plenty of room. All right, let's bring the knees down. And we're just gonna do a little bit of elevation and depression of the shoulder so you can see the difference, all right? So shoulder heads up, that's elevation. Shoulder heads down, that's depression, right? This is shoulder heads lifting, shoulder heads going towards my sits bones. And your arms are overhead, shoulder heads lift, and then collarbone gets wide, ribs draw back. So this is a handstand, right? You're gonna stand on your head. Shoulder heads go down and that makes space for my neck. Let's see if Kim can move it. Shoulder heads lift, spread the collarbones, push into the floor or ceiling, right? Triceps wrap forward. You're gonna bend your elbows. If you're gonna balance here, you're gonna let the shoulder heads descend and look how much more room my neck has, okay? You can shake your head yes and no, nice and easy. Okay, so those are differences in the shoulders that we're gonna keep in mind while we're practicing. All right? Okay, let's get flowing. Coming to the top of the mat. Inhale, extend the spine, exhale, fold, reach those arms out, and up. Exhale, Samas Tihi. I'm just going to um, put uh, some more lights on and readjust the camera. There you go. Namaskar A, we're going to do Frankenstein style. So listening ears. Arms out and up. For circles. Exhale, invite that little back bend. Maybe you like to draw the arm bones in. Maybe your cactus. Exhale, fold Uttanasana. Inhale, arm to Uttanasana. Palms come to the floor. Lots of energy underneath the index of thumb. Cover the heels. Set your arms up. As you push into your hands, as you push into your hands, float it back, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, Cobra up dog, breathing here. Exhale, Adho Mukhasvanasana, downward facing dog. I don't think I'd ever done that before where my foot got stuck like that. Breathing here. And now, with your inhale, you're gonna integrate the right leg bone into the socket, so hover it in. Push into the ball of your left foot and just step that right foot up as far as it will go. Flex your left foot, you're gonna hover that leg bone into the socket, step it up, push into the ball of your right foot. And keep doing that. Let's come to the top of the mat. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, exhale, Uttanasana, forward fold. And all the way up, exhale, Samastihi. Inhale, arms reach, integrate the femur bone, the humerus bone, exhale, dive. Ardha Uttanasana, plant those palms, hover, float. Cobra up dog. Exhale, down dog. Deep breath. 
keeping all four sides of the waist nice and long. Notice what you do. You have a tendency to kind of round the upper shoulders. I want you to push your arms in, wrap your triceps down more. You have a tendency to splay in the back of the body, knit those sits bones together. And then hover the left leg, push into the ball of your right foot. Let that chest move towards your thigh, move towards your chest. Right leg bone into the hip socket, push into the ball of your left foot, and bring it forward. Inhale, extend the spine, exhale, fold. All right. Ordo Salsen, exhale, Samastihi. We'll do two more like that. Reaching the arms, hinging over the legs, inhale, extending the spine, exhale, come to the ball of the foot, see if you can draw the leg bone into the socket to jump back. Inhale, back bend, exhale, Adha Mudra Lift the heels, flex your right foot, draw that leg bone in, step it up as far as it will go. Left leg bone draws in and see if you can bring the toes to your forearm and bring it back. Shoulders will come over the wrist. See if you can touch your wrist with your left toes. Third time, bring it back. Lift the right leg, draw that leg bone into the socket. Shoulders go over the wrist, maybe even beyond. See if you can touch. Bring it back. Spreading the collarbones. Ooh, see if you can touch. Bring it back. Wow. One more time. Bring it back. And then push into your hands. Shoulders over the wrist, maybe even a little beyond. And just see if you can plug the leg bones into the socket. And hop it up to the top of the mat. Inhale, extend, exhale, fold. Arms out to the side. Forward Vastasana, exhale, Samastiti. Last three, Namaskara A. Five minutes. Take that same work to the other side. So big toes touch. I lift my heels. I'm gonna bring the right leg bone into the socket. Step it up. Oh, sorry. No, I'm gonna bring the left leg bone into the socket. Step it up. Bring that right leg bone into the socket. Shoulders over the wrist and see if I can touch. Maybe bring it back. See if I can touch. Bring it back. My gaze is right at the heels of the hands, or maybe right at the thumbs. Bring it back and we'll take that to the other side. And step it up. Extend the spine, exhale, fold. Reach those arms, the circle. Exhale, samastihi. Maybe shake your wrists out. And now reach those arms to sky. Wrap the triceps forward, keep those knees hugging together and sit back, Utkatasana. Draw the belly back, reach the ribs back. Energy towards your heels. Nice deep inhale here, bring your ribs to your thighs. Folding Uttanasana. And then let your weight draw a little bit forward so you have energy under the ball of the foot. The heel is gonna stay down. Nice deep inhale here. Maybe bring the tops of the hands to the floor. Let your arms go nice and straight. You're just gonna float it back, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, cobra up dog, keeping the belly in. Exhale, downward facing dog. 
Turn the left toes out, step the right foot up, right next to your thumb, and line it up for Virabhadrasana one. I like to reach the left arm forward, find that little bit of a twist, nice bend in that front knee, and then rather than strutting the chest forward, I'm gonna draw back. Let the arm bones integrate into the body. Breathing here, nice deep inhale here. As you exhale, hands to heart center, pivot that back heel, and I'm just gonna float into my Virabhadrasana three. I wanna keep the belly in, practice getting that nice long line of your torso. Good, and then reach that right palm up behind you, the belly in, and I'm gonna reach the left arm around. Go Mukhasana, arms. As I exhale, I'm just gonna bend that right knee and float back. Here, Vajrasana one, with Go Mukhasana, arms. Don't worry about clasping. Tricep to sky. Nice deep inhale here without overthinking it. I'm gonna let go of the arms and just circumduct that left arm. Set my feet up. Here, Vajrasana two, heel to arch alignment. Breathing here. Left arm down, right arm to sky. Nice deep inhale here as I exhale. Side angle pose. We're gonna draw the left ribs in. Roll the right ribs. And float that left arm. Make space between the neck and your shoulder. Maybe a butterfly kiss. Good, nice deep inhale here. As I exhale, I'm gonna let that hand come down, pivot that left heel, frame the front foot, and just take a floating Chaturanga Dandasana. Nice deep inhale here as I exhale, three-legged dog. Rack your triceps back, let the forearms come down. Shake your head yes and no. Then I'm gonna karate chop with my pinkies, line my elbows up underneath my shoulders. Draw the shoulders away from the ears, and if you need to bring the right foot down, go ahead. Nothing wrong with that. Maybe you keep it lifted. Maybe just touch the top of the head to the floor and lift back up. Exhale, just touch, no pressure. Bring the left heel down. Last time. Bring both feet down and take a child's pose. Walk your hands over to the right, pull with that left arm. Left hand to the middle of the mat, right hand stacks on top. Allow that integration so you feel like your shoulder blades are a diamond lighting up. And walk your hands over to the left, pull with the right arm. And the other side. Left hand on top of right. Okay, forearms to the floor interlacing your hands make sure your pinkies are flush right so that they're not an x one inside the other i'm going to draw the shoulders away from the ears do that here shake your head yes and no and make sure you know where the top of your head is right so the top of your head is where the part is you might have roots there um, you can figure out where it is by making loose ears and bringing your middle fingers together, or you can take the heel of the hand to your third eye, and then loose here on one side where the middle fingers meet. 
that's where you want on the floor. Okay? You want to get your, this is Salama Shurshasana, supported headstand. You want to get this down before you start playing around with the other inversions, even though other ones are easier in some ways to find. Because this one's stable. So shoulders move towards your sit bones. Top of the head touches. All right, very light. Walk your feet in. See if you can let that right leg bone integrate into the socket and bring the heel toward your sit bones. Integrate the left leg in, bring the heel toward your sit bones. And then both legs reach up. Sometimes it's nice to flex the feet so you can feel how to lengthen the tailbone. But once you have your stack, your shoulders and hips are in line, you can really do anything you want with your legs, right? So you can do this at a wall. And if you're doing this at a wall, your fingertips or your knuckles are gonna be flush at the wall. Shoulder blades to sky. It's not too much pressure on the top of my head. I mean, there's some, but it's not too much. I could actually push into my forearms and lift off the floor and then bring it back down. All right. Nice deep inhale here. And then to come out, I'm going to go nice and slow so I can train the core of the body. All right. So I'm going to keep that right leg bone. Drawing into the torso. Keep bringing it in. And then come on down. Child's pose once again. I think that's one way to come down. Find your downward facing dog. And then we're gonna go the other way. So you're gonna wrap your triceps back, lift the heels, plug the right leg bone into the socket, step that foot up as far as it will go. Shoulders come over the wrist. And you keep reaching that left foot away from the body. Imagine you're trying to lift the ball of that left foot to the sky, right? And just see if you can lift up from the front leg and bring the thigh in towards your chest. Right. Push the floor away, lots of energy underneath the index and thumb. And slowly try to bring it down and come on up. Arms to sky, exhale, Samas. Just let your ribs lay on the thighs. Right? Grab your calves or your heels. Keep your elbows together. Try to keep that integration. Inhale, extend the spine and rehinge. See if you can fold in. Sternum's reaching towards the toes. Try not to push back. You want hips right over the ankle. Extend the spine, plant your palms, float it back. Find your back bend. Adho Mukha Svanasana, right toes turn out, left foot steps up. Right, always lining your pose up before you inhale. Notice what's happening with the body, right? You want the body to be ready, the torso to be ready. And if you're you know, kind of leaning and finding that compression point in your low back already, you're not really in a state of readiness, right? So draw back, feet in here, line it up. Hands to heart center, you're gonna pivot that back heel, bit of a draw some of three, and 
gonna reach that left arm behind me, palm facing up. Right arm, pat myself on the back. And with the big toe mount, I'm gonna re-bend that left knee and flow back. Right, right arm's gonna reach up and around. Left arm forward, Virabhadrasana two. Get that torso one line. Reverse, side angle. Lining it up. Very butterfly chest. And as I exhale, I'm with the right hand come down. And the left. Three legged Chaturanga Dandasan through your Vinyasa. Oh, I think we just went to three legged down dog. That's fine. I'm gonna hover the elbows. Falcon pose, you can stay here. This is strengthening for your shoulders. If you like, you can let the elbows come down. Interlace your hands. And three legged dog. This time, let the chest come over the thumbs and draw back. Two, three. That foot come down, Velasana Child's Pose. Reach your hands forward. Uh, for an extended child, active extended child, and practice with your hands, right? Palms on the floor, lots of energy underneath the um, index and thumb. Grip the floor with your hands, wrap your triceps. Isometrically pull back, spread your collarbones. Good. Keep that. Let your elbows come back down, interlace your fingers, and then walk your elbows in so they're right underneath your shoulders. Okay? As you're pushing down with your pinkies and the outer wrists and the forearms, as you're getting the collarbone wide, see if you can energetically pull your elbows and knees together. And then soften the shoulders away from your ears. You're going to tuck your toes, lift your hips up and back, just at the top of the head touch. Walk your feet in. See if you can let that left leg bone lift. Heel towards your sits bones. Right leg bone comes in. Heels to sky, lengthen your tailbone. Shoulders away from the ears. And this should feel nice and light. Super stable. My fingers aren't like overly gripping or anything. Right? This is your stack. Keep integrating that leg bone into the socket as the foot comes down. Maybe touch. Bring it back up. That's pretty challenging. And then to come down, if you want to try a different way, bring the sits bones towards your heels. Down and bring the Thighs towards the chest. Nice and gentle into your child's pose. Right? And then separate your knees, reach your arms back. Through vinyasa, if you want one, otherwise, straight to downward facing dog.
big toes to touch. Left leg bone into the socket, float that foot up as far as you can. Reach back with that right leg. Imagine you're trying to touch the wall with your big toe mound. Shoulders right over the wrists and as you push into your hands, try to keep that integration. Try to keep the arms straight. And then nice and gentle towards the top of the mat. Arms out in circles, word the sasana. Exhale, samastiti. Breathe in here. Okay, so your neck should be feeling really easy. There shouldn't be any pressure on it or anything. So if it's not, then um, do a standing split instead. All right, and another inversion that I like that doesn't use any pressure on your neck um, is going to a wall. Now your feet come pretty wide, wider than the mat, like um, uh, Prasada Padottanasana legs, right? Pretty close to the wall. And then I'm going to pick a side because you don't want to crunch your diaphragm. I'm going to pick a side Lean out to the side and then bring my spine to the wall and walk my hands up. It's super comfortable. More comfortable at a wall than a glass door. Really great for your hamstrings. It's a really nice um, inversion. All the benefits of an inversion without actually having to put any pressure on your neck or shoulders or hands. Very relaxing. Provides all the traction. Bring my fingertips to the floor to come out. Then I'm gonna bend my knees and let my torso go over towards the knee that I favor to come out. Right. It's not just a roll up because then you end up crunching or your diaphragm doesn't feel good. Okay. So if that is something you prefer, do that. Inhale, palms up, get nice and long. Utkatasan. Exhale, ribs to thighs, folding in. Arha Uttanasan, plant those palms. Go back. Through vinyasa. Line it up for Virabhadrasana 1. Exhale, hands to heart center, Virabhadrasana 3. Try to focus on lengthening the torso. Right. Reaching the right hand behind you, left arm on top. And then float it back. I didn't mirror this one, so I'm doing the same size as you. Virabhadrasana 2. Reverse warrior, keep your bend in that right knee. And maybe you teach a trikonasana this time, trying to focus on keeping length in the side waist. Exhale, frame that front foot. Try to keep the right leg straight as you reach it back. Three-legged dog. Let those elbows come down. You can also work with dolphin. You can just work with shoulder strengthening by bringing the chest over the thumbs. Maybe you come onto the tippy toe of that right foot, head touches down, and keep letting that right leg bone reach into the torso as you reach out through the left big toe mound. Coming up, feet together. And then any leg variations you want, right? Maybe you do, I always forget what this is called. Reach it out. One back up. Flex the feet. Find your integration, both legs together. Chaturanga Dandasan on your forearms. And then let's open up the front of the body. All right? Sphinx pose. Belly button in. Maybe coming up a little bit higher if you like. 
inviting a little extra work into the erector. And then lengthen on down, we do my favorite shoulder opener, which is Pec Minor. I do this every day because I love inversion so much. And I reach my right arm out to the side, anywhere between 12 and three. Roll onto the right side body. Check in with your energy. This is pretty restful pose. Those of you who need it, both feet to the floor, knees together. Back through center. And then take that to the other side, reaching out with the left arm. Bring the right foot behind me. center. Bring your sphinx pose one more time, rolling in our thighs to the sky. Hands by your low ribs, cobra upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale. This time we're inducing legs, so I'm not going to mirror you. I'm going to step that right foot up to the top of my mat, pretty close. Inhale, kind of supported. Three legged dog. Exhale, folding over the legs, scan and split. And then if you want, I'm going to keep that leg bone touching my rib cage. And then reach out. If you have a natural split more than I do, it's very easy to reach up with that left big toe mound. Wrist down the shoulder, one line. I'm going to try and keep the attachment here. Try to keep touching, right? Oh. I'm going to make sure your arms stay straight and that energy is on the inside of the hand. To slow your descent to come down. Inhale, extend the spine, exhale, fold. Arms out and up, forward by Stassen. Exhale, Samastihi. Utkatasan. Exhale, folding. Inhale, extend through your vinyasa. Right toes turn out, sticking up with the left foot. Here we draw us in a one. Lining it up. Exhale, float out. Here we draw us in a three. Left arm reaches behind you. Right hand steps up and around. And reach back, open up the Virabhadrasana to heel to arch alignment. Getting your reverse warrior. Utita Trikonasana. Getting nice and long. Left arm up and over. So plant your hands. I'm going to pivot that back heel. Push into the floor. So you're going to protract the shoulders. Three legged dog. Allow those elbows to come down, interlacing the hands. Maybe you stay here. If you're going to go to headstand, shoulders descend toward your sits bones. Head comes down as you keep that left leg bone moving into the torso. Get the hips over the shoulders. Right. Reaching up. Anything you want with your leg. You can invite, what are these called, sea legs? Getting one leg reaching out with the other. Whee! That plays with the weight distribution on your forearms or your hands during handstands. Mm. 
and both feet together. Maybe you bend the knees, maybe you keep them straight. Keep that integration. Nice and slow. Child's pose, come on down. Nice active child's reach out um, Astabanda. So uh, have your wrists lifted up like you got two canes up there. towards your uh, left wrist, standing split. Maybe that's enough for you. Right. And plant your palms. Come onto the ball of your left foot. Keep the right toes reaching towards the sky. Shoulders over the wrist, maybe even a little beyond the wrist. Set your gaze right between your hands. You don't need to look at the top of your mat or your finger or your index fingers. Keep it towards your thumbs or maybe even towards the heels of your hands so you keep your neck safe. All right. And see what happens. Reaching up. If you feel confident, drop your head. Then slow, come down. Even slower than that. Inhale, extend the spine, exhale, fold. Come on up. Exhale, Samastiti. Okay, shake out your wrists. Breathing here, how are we doing on time? 107, oh my God, already? Okay. So, I wanted to do a little bit of a drill. So you're going to find your blocks, okay? You're going to take your blocks and place them on the mat, hip distance, and step on them. And stand here. Inhale, reach those arms up. Exhale. Come on down, I'm gonna hinge over. And see if you can plant your hands, shoulder distance, maybe even a little bit outer shoulder. And then just see if you can try and bring your toes towards your wrists, All right? I'm gonna bring the blocks together, that's why it's harder. Shoulders come over the wrist, I'm going to lift and try and touch. And it's pretty hard. Alright, but you'll feel your core once you start to do that. Then I'm going to reach back and just see. Alright. Right. A little scary because you are starting at a lifted foundation, so it feels like whoa, it doesn't feel as easy, but it is actually easier to feel the work in your core. So hinging in Uttanasana, inhale Ardha Uttanasana as I exhale, I'm going to plant those palms, 
reach that left leg back and see if I can keep the thigh attached to my ribs as I lift up. Gently come on back down. You can try that a couple times. See how it feels for you. Alright. I don't have a wall, but another really, really, really good exercise you can do is take your blocks on the lowest one. You're gonna grip thumb and pinky on the outside. Find your favorite standing leg. Try to keep your arms nice and straight. Looking straight down. And then try to lift up this way. Now it's easier with a wall because you can trust that something will catch you. Tricep spacing back. And then take it to the other side. Sometimes I get this right away and some days I don't and today I'm not. Arms straight matters. I'm not going to force it. Inhale, extend the spine. Exhale, fold. But it's easier with the wall behind you because you don't feel like you're going to go over. Right? Folding in. Shake your wrists out. And then separate your feet a little wider than your hips. And bend my knees. Bring my hands to my thighs, and we're just gonna do a little bit of breath work to turn the belly. It's really nice to release the low back. Um, it's called Nowly, and um, it's really nice to give the internal organs a little bit of massage. Okay, I'm gonna come on down. I wanna keep that belly squeaking in. And I'm gonna try and make space between my belly and my leotard, right? And my onesie thingy. some hip circles. Take a few breaths on the third breath. I'm going to hold the breath out. I'll turn that angle so you can see a little better. I'm going to find my throat lock. When you need to inhale, gently release. And do my hip circles to the other side. I'll turn that way so you can be able to see better. Mustasana, standing on your hands. You can use the ball of the foot to massage your wrists. And then bring my hands down to this one. I'm going to reach one leg back and I'm going to bend my standing leg so I really have the hip, the, the chest on the thigh and I'm going to keep that. Shoulders over the wrists, this leg's reaching away, maybe even up, trying to reach up the big toe. Nice deep inhale here as I exhale. I'm still going to integrate this leg bone, the right, uh, right leg bone I'm mirroring into the socket and try to keep 
the thigh attached to the chest. All right, so you're reaching up. Maybe Garadasana legs if you find it. And then nice and slow to come down. this out and take that to the other side so even though this leg is bent and the chest is on the thigh I'm still going to try and integrate this leg bone into the side Falling out is really scary. So there's a couple ways to do it. Um, one is the cartwheel. I don't really have that much room, but. And so if that scares you, you can just do a regular cartwheel. It doesn't need to be fancy. Some people, their cartwheel looks like this, hand, hand, foot, foot, and that's fine. Right. Line up cartwheels aren't that good. I'm gonna lift up. I just wanna make sure I don't kick my bookshelf, but lift up my step. Hand, hand, foot, foot. Nothing fancy, right? You can practice that. And you wanna slow it down. Those of you who handstand a lot, you can um, play with the weight of the hands maybe. We're not gonna do that today. I'm just gonna lift up just like, you know, first learning gymnastics, right? Lifting up, step, hand, hand, foot, foot. All right, doesn't need to be fancy, okay? And so then, if you're up, right, and you're gonna fall out, Hope you don't kick your plants. <laughs> Whoopsie woo. Sorry, plants. In your studio. Hopefully you don't have your plants there. All right, so I'll demo that with this ankle. You're eating it. So if you're up, right, and you're gonna fall out. Oh my god. You can just come out nice and neat. It's definitely the safest one. It's the most controlled. Other ways that people fall out is to headstand, or is to um, uh, forward fold, right? So that brings your chin into your chest and you kind of roll out. So you end up coming into a forward roll like that. And I used to do that all the time. I'm not as comfortable with it anymore because I spend a lot of time falling out as a cartwheel, so I'm gonna fall. But I'm gonna try it. Right here, let's see. Which way to go? So, if you're feeling unstable, you can. Bring the knee and roll in. Bring your chin to your chest and roll out. It's another way to fall out of your handstand. Some people flip into a back bend, which I don't think I'm gonna to demo today, but um, it really depends. If you have, you tend to be stronger as opposed to bendy, 
probably the forward roll variation or the cartwheel is gonna be the better way to go. Um, if you're naturally very bendy, flipping into that back bend is pretty natural to you, right? Let's see, I'll see if I can try it. The one you wanna cultivate is the cartwheel. They all exist, they're all okay, you know. Right, so really backbending people tend to just go into a backbend and then whoa, right? And fall and come down like that. And it's okay. Um, obviously you wanna try and stay stable. So those are some ways that should have been towards the beginning of this session. Sorry about that. <laughs> Maybe you can forward like, um, swipe all the way until you get there and then come on back i'll put it in the comments but um if you're really uncomfortable about going upside down you feel like you're almost ready you can always practice the ways of falling out until you get comfortable with that and then um come on back in Alrighty. uh i think just for time and for uploading times uh, i think we're gonna end it here this is a little more workshoppy. Maybe find a blanket and sit on your blanket, sitting up nice and tall. Elbows underneath the shoulders. Let the breath calm. Let's just take a twist. Right hand behind you, left hand reaches across. Back through center. Take it the other way. Back through center. And we switch our feet. Notice how your energy might feel different from before you started moving. See if you can um, be a witness of anything drawing you away from the breath and allow yourself to maybe spend a little time with those sensations. The body's smart, it's going to tell you where your energy is, um, it's going to uh, tell you where your energy is pulling you and that's your, it gives you what you need to listen to and what you need to address. And then once you address those things, you can come back into your breath and breathe easy.
Welcome and stay in um, seated meditation. Those of you who want to come into Shavasana or um, maybe even legs up the wall if you want to keep with the inversion theme. And line it up. You can place something nice and soft like a blanket underneath your sacrum. And just reach your legs up the wall. If you don't have a wall, if you have a cap, something that will work as well. And you don't need to be that close to the wall. When I first started practicing, they used to tell us to be like right six bones at the wall, but for a lot of people, it's more comfortable to be further back, okay? Sometimes it's nice to take a strap and place it around your thighs so that they're not flailing around. Let the breath go and let the practice go.
As you lie in your breath cycle, begin to bring some awareness back to your breath. Nice deep inhale in. Exhale through the mouth. Start to move your fingers and toes, just in little circles. Reach out through the arms and legs. And draw your knees into your chest. If you're using a wall, you can place your feet on the wall and glide your heels down. Maybe you rock side to side. Maybe pick a side of the body to roll onto and then make your way up to a nice, comfortable seated position, sitting up nice and tall. We're going to end with Loka Samasta Sukhino Bhavan two, three times. That means may all beings be happy and free. Then Om Shanti Shanti Shanti, peace, peace, and brotherly peace. One time and one Om. Loka Samasta Sukhino Bhavan two. Loka Samasta Sukhino Bhavan two. Loka Samasta Sukhino Bhavan two. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Start center heart to head and head to heart. Come sit for that. Namaste, yogins. Uh, thanks for playing along, and um, please feel free to reach out with uh, ideas. Hope this wasn't too discombobulated today, but hope I'll see you again. Okay, thanks. Bye.